Uh, hi. How you doing? Well, hi. It's nice to meet you, but uh, uh, what are you doing with my chicken? Who are you again? Uh, the Goldman sisters. Um, some people call us the Gold Dust Twins. Of course, we're not twins, but um, we live across the street at 1412. Well, it's, it's so very nice to meet you, but... Um, You're that Japanese gal. You're the vegetarian. <laughs> What's a vegetarian doing with a chicken? Sounds a little suspicious to me. No, that's Rusty. She's a pet. <laughs> Is she now? Uh, what, are you, what are you doing? I have to see if it fits. <laughs> She's not for eating, she's a pet. A chicken for a pet? What are you, a sugar nut? <laughs> no, <laughs> she's a vegetarian. Does your chicken give eggs? Uh, well, actually, yes. Green ones. Oh, something wrong with the chicken. <laughs> don't eat the eggs. Well, actually, I don't eat the eggs because I'm a vegan. A vegan, what's that? Uh, a plant eater, an herbivore. What's that? That is a kabocha, a Japanese squash. Looks like it'd be very nice with a little piece of chicken. <laughs> we were told to eat chicken for the lower cholesterol. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's a myth. Because uh, chicken actually has as much cholesterol as beef. If you're really interested in lowering your risk of heart disease, you should try switching to a plant-based diet. Come on, Rusty, you can go now. Plant-based? You mean like shrubbery? No, actually, uh, today I'm going to be making a gâteau de crepe. Oh, la-dee-da. <laughs> if it's got crepes, it's got to have eggs. Well, actually, no, because I'm a vegan, remember? So my crepes don't have any eggs. Without eggs. Here's a picture of one in my book. Crepe cake with no eggs? Prove it. Look, ladies, I'll tell you what. Why don't you come over later and have some with me and you tell me what you think? <laughs> A crepe with no eggs. Huh. What time? Mm -hmm. This is real food, baby. Ah! This is so easy to make. It's another one of those uh, 30 second specials. Well, I guess I'm going to have company tonight. The uh, Goldman sisters, or the Goldust twins, or whatever they're called. Anyway, I'm anxious to show them how wonderful plants can be. And I'm not talking about shrubbery. So I'm going to make a fabulous gateau de crepe of a multi-layered cake sandwiching all kinds of wonderful vegetables. A layer of duck cells, which are finely minced mushrooms sauteed with shallots, a really intense mushroom flavor, a layer of kabocha squash and a layer of spinach all tied together with a wonderful vegan bechamel sauce. Crepes are typically made with lots of eggs holding together a little bit of flour, but I don't eat eggs as I mentioned before. So I'm going to do something a little different. I'm starting out by putting about three cups of water in my blender, which will make a, a slightly thinner batter than uh, milk or soy milk would. And in order to bind the flour together, I've got about two ounces of tofu, which is a wonderful egg substitute. So I'm going to drop that into my water right here. Now I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of baking powder, which will add the leavening action that I want that it's going to be missing without the eggs. I'm going to season that with a teaspoon of sea salt. And then we're going to throw in some flour. I've got a, a cup of all-purpose flour, and then a cup of whole wheat pastry flour. And then we're just going to whir this for about a minute to combine it all beautifully, and then we have to let the batter rest for about an hour. Okay, I think that's about done. Now I've got to let this batter rest for about an hour because that helps the crepes hold together when I cook them. You know, when I make crepes, I like to make lots of them and find all kinds of uses for them. It just occurred to me, the Goldman sisters will probably want to have dessert. So I think I'll make dessert crepes as well. Another gateau de crepe, but with berries and a vegan whipping cream. 
So we're going to have gâteau de crepe for entree and dessert. Maybe I am Michigan. Okay, while the batter is resting, it's time to prepare the vegetables. I know that the Goldman sisters took a great interest in this squash. This is a kabocha. It's a Japanese squash. Uh, Japanese pumpkin is what they call it. And it's a really, really wonderful squash. This is going to be one of my fillings. I'm going to take the, uh, yeah, it's not working. Let's see if I can use this ice cream scooper to scoop the seeds out. If you can see the inside here, as you can see, it's a really dry pumpkin. And uh, it's really easy to, it doesn't have all the strings and all the yucky goop that pumpkins often have inside. It's a wonderful meaty squash with a thin skin that you can actually eat. For this purpose, we're gonna actually not use the skin, but anyway, let me get all the seeds out. And what I'm gonna do is pop this in the oven, just place them down here, put a little bit of water in the bottom of my dish, and we're gonna bake them for about an hour, maybe a little bit less because they're pretty small, until they're nice and tender. All right, in the meantime, I'm gonna start on my duck cells, uh, which are finely minced mushrooms, sauteed with shallots, uh, really intense mushroom flavor. All right, so to mince these mushrooms, I'm gonna pulse them in the food processor, but I'm just gonna cut them into sort of a uniform size. You can just have them or uh, cut them into quarters. Okay, now I'm gonna pulse these mushrooms. You don't want to overfill the food processor, otherwise they won't pulse evenly. I'm just going to turn it on for a minute. Okay, now all my mushrooms are done. Hey, Miyoko. Hey. I just saw the Goldman sisters. I was out walking my dog. The Goldman sisters are out. I invited them to dinner. You what? Be nice. What? I know they're a little eccentric. Eccentric? Are you kidding me? All right, well, you better be careful. You know, uh, they'll wander into your yard. Be careful with your chickens. And they wandered into my house. They did? Sort of like you. Oh. oh. What are you making? Uh, I'm making gâteau de crepe. Gâteau, wait. Gâteau. You're cooking a cat? No, a cake of crepes. It's a French oh, cake, multi-layered okay. cake crepe filled with all kinds of wonderful vegetable fillings enrobed in a fabulous vegan bechamel sauce. Mm. You want to help? I'm making duck cells now. Wait a minute, now we're having duck? No, duck cells, duck cells, you know, my French isn't very good. Finely minced mushrooms. Oh, okay. And uh, they're going to be sauteed with some shallots. You want to help? Uh, sure, it's why I'm here. Okay, oh. this is what we want to do. To get a really, really intense mushroom flavor, what you want to do is take these finely chopped mushrooms yeah. and we're gonna put them in this tea towel right here, okay? Just a handful at a time. Ooh, they look great. And we're gonna squeeze the juice out as much as we can, like that. Oh, look at yep. that. And we're gonna get it as dry as possible and that really concentrates that mushroom flavor. Let them make It's gonna make a fabulous, all right, miss. Mr. Strongman, you go do that and I'm <laughs> yes. gonna chop the shallots and then we're gonna get the shallots cooking. Okay. okay, let me get this, this stove on there. All right. All right. Now, sh duck cells can be used as a filling for all kinds of wonderful things, pastries, uh, ravioli, etc. Today, it's going to be one of the fillings for my crepes, along with spinach and the kabocha squash that I have roasting in the oven right now. As always, sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. And okay. we're going to put a little bit of oil in there so it doesn't stick. This is just some grapeseed oil. And I'm gonna to toss these minced shallots in there. Let that go for a few minutes to soften up. Then we're gonna add these. Oh, that's beautiful. See how Am dry? Yep, yeah. yep, they're supposed to be nice and I dry like that. You do very do good. good, very good, yes. Very good. Mr. McGovern, you do very good <laughs> job. All right, get all this stuff in there. Got my shallots going. Now you can flavor this with various herbs like tarragon too. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna keep it pretty straightforward. And gâteau de crepe, this is just one version that I'm making today with the spinach and the mushrooms and the 
and the kabocha, but you can do like a Mediterranean version, you know, with eggplant or zucchini, uh, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. There's many, many versions of gâteau de crepe. Oh, oh, doesn't it sound good? Smell good? Just the uh, the shallots cooking there. All right, now the shallots look ready. I'm gonna put in these duck cells that you mince so well, but you did make quite well, a I mess here. I squeezed them dry. Yeah, and you made a, a mess doing that too. But. Hey, that's a man's job in the kitchen. Why do you think I'm here? All right, so now we're just gonna saute these duck cells for about 10 or 15 minutes, get them really, really dry. We're gonna season them with a little bit of sea salt. Put that in there. Some wonderful gray Celtic sea salt there. The and salt's from Ireland. This, oh, and are you from Ireland too? Well, not directly. I, <laughs> there are stops All along right. the way. All right, so anyway, we're going to let that go for a few minutes. Meanwhile, I'm going to make the bechamel sauce that's going to tie all of this together. It's going to go into the, uh, the duck cells, the spinach, and the kabocha. So I'm back here at my blender. Now, bechamel sauce is usually made with a roux which means butter and, or oil with flour, and you cook it, and then you add some milk or cream. And those things are all no-nos. Those are all no-nos. So once again, we go back to our trusty cashew nuts, and we're gonna make a sauce out of that. And it's about a one to three ratio of raw cashew nuts to, white, uh, to just to water. So I'm gonna add a cup of cashew nuts, add some water, And then we're going to puree that. All right, that's about it. Now the cashews have emulsified with the water to make a wonderful, wonderful creamy milk. And I'm going to put that in the pot here. And you're I've going to seen see you do, use the cashews a, a half a dozen times, and I'm always That's right. Amazed. Well, you know, instead of milk, I use cashew milk. Uh -huh. You just keep that stirring. Sure. And in a few minutes, without the addition of any oil, just from cashews and water, this is going to turn into this fabulous creamy sauce. I'm just going to season it with a little bit of nutmeg, which will give it that bechamel flavor. So we'll let that go for a few minutes. You're going to see that thicken up. Okay, so the mushrooms are beginning to look a little drier, but we want to cook them until they're fully dry. You know what? I'm going to have you, I'm going to teach you how to make some crepes, because i got to get that started. Yeah, ever made crepes before? Uh, the real thin pancakes. That's exactly right. No, the answer nope. is no. Okay. Flipped a lot of flapjacks, but nope. never a crepe. All right, so I'm going to teach you how to do it, and we're going to try to get a big stack going here. Can okay. you go over there and grab a plate, a white plate, that we can put them on? All right, so I've got a pan here, and we want to make sure that it's the right temperature before we put the batter in it. So I'm going to get it nice and hot, but not burning. I'm going to put a little bit of pan spray, which helps the crepes not to stick too much. And one of the most important keys to making a crepe, and sometimes the first one doesn't turn out, is that you pour the batter with the pan off of the flame. That's very, very important, so it doesn't solidify right away. Oh, I see. Sometimes okay. the first one or two don't turn out, so we'll see how this, this you, works You get out. a couple mulligans. Yep. Now, can you hear that? Yeah. You gotta hear that sound, and it's still probably not hot enough. We'll let that go for a minute. It's gotta be fully cooked on one side gotcha. before we flip it, otherwise it's gonna stick. Okay. All right? And I'm gonna give my bechamel a stir. It still hasn't reached a, a level where it's nice and thick yet. Let that go for another minute. Can you hear all the things sizzling? Got the crepes yeah. cooking here. Now don't try to flip it now or it's gonna disintegrate, all right? And remember, we let that crepe batter sit for about an hour because it helps it hold together. And the mushrooms are looking beautiful. Now, if you want at this point, you can add a little bit of sherry or red wine or Madeira. Um, we're going to keep it simple. I'm just going to add a little bit of parsley to that. I'll have a little sherry. <laughs> All right, get that in there. And the duck cells are going to be ready in a minute. Oh, that looks beautiful. Or whatever you want to, however you want to pronounce them. Duck cells, duck cells, I don't know. My daughter is always saying, it's not crepe, mom, it's crap. Crap. Yeah. Almost ready. You don't have to take that crap from her. <laughs> oh, Mr. McGovern. That's why I let you in this place. Thank you. 
All right, that one flipped over better than I thought it would for the, the first crepe. Mushrooms are almost ready. The sauce is cooking up. Not thick enough yet. Be between each uh, crepe you should yep. uh, spray, okay. So just pour a little bit in, and it's a turn of the wrist. You see that. To get it all covered, make sure you don't pour too much in there. And we're gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes. Okay. All right, I'm over here at the bechamel sauce. It's getting nice and thick. It's coating the, the spoon nicely now. And the thickness is, mm -hmm. is caused by a cooking and? Uh, the, just the cashew nuts, that's all. And I'm gonna season that with a little bit of sea salt. So there must be a little, what, starch or something? Yeah, there's starch in, yeah. in the nut. And I've got a little grater here. I'm gonna put some freshly grated nutmeg mm. in there. Look at that sauce. Gotta get me one of them for the egg oh, yeah. Look how nice and thick that is now. Do you see that? Just cashews and water, and now it's formed this beautiful, nice, thick sauce. And that oh, is our bechamel sauce. Oh, yeah. Right. And That's the right. duck cells, look how nice and dry they are. They're all ready. Okay, you can just what see when the they're spot? perfect. You, 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 just, you pull it out you with can your just, fingers. You can, if, they're, if they've held together. If you've made it right, you can do that. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't want you to burn yourself. No. All right, so now. All right, Mr. McGovern, you try. Okay. Fortunately, I'm left-handed. This might help. Oh boy. Okay, that's enough, that's enough. That's okay, enough, hurry, hurry, hurry. Turn it, turn it, turn it. Turn it, turn it, turn it. <laughs> the pressure. No, that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna get started on the spinach. Okay, I've got a big, beautiful bunch of spinach that I'm gonna be sauteing for a minute. It's a really, really easy dish. All the vegetables are prepared very simply. That's and then just, uh, no, this is not for my garden. Um, Oh, so I'm just going to cut these up very roughly, and we're just going to saute them just for a second. You can do it either in water, or you can saute it in oil, either way, just until they wilt, but we don't want them to get watery. So I'm just going to put the spinach in there. It's okay if there's a few mushrooms. It's not going to hurt anything because it's all going to go into the same place. Dash of salt again. Another spoon. Now when you got too much crepe batter like that, you can always pour it back in so it's not too thick. There. Ah, gee, 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 gee. All of me glue. Okay, so I've kept the heat high on my spinach so it's not sitting in a puddle of water, which is exactly how I want it. Now I'm gonna check on the kabocha and then we'll be able to tie it all up. Kabocha check. <laughs> all right, I got a knife here somewhere. Wanna make sure that it's, ah, knife goes in easily and my kabocha is ready. Now actually you can eat the skin because it's so tender, I'm gonna even let you taste it here but we're gonna peel it for our purposes here. Just taste that. It's a really tender skin. I mean, imagine doing that with butternut squash or something. Isn't that tender? Yeah, it is. Yeah, all right, so we're gonna scoop. Squash itself is delicious. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? It's mm. sweet and succulent. All right, I'm gonna take the squash out here. It's still a little hot, so I'm gonna burn my fingers. Uh, you know what, I gotta get a bowl for this. Put that in here. How are the crepes coming along? Terry? They are beautiful crepes. You'll be very happy with them. <laughs> You're turning into crepe man. Huh? I am crepe man. Oh. I was grill man, now I'm crepe man. Ooh, burning my fingers. Good idea to let them cool first. Yeah. All right, so get that in there. And you can feed the, the skin to your chickens if you want. They love it, and my dog loves them too. You can feed the skin to your chickens. Yeah, the, the skin of the, uh, the kabocha. See, the only reason I'm not using the skin for this dish is I don't want it to be green. I want it to be a nice orange filling. But for many dishes, I will actually use keep the skin on because it's got a wonderful little flavor too. All right, so I get my kabocha in this bowl here. And now what we're gonna do 
is tie it all together by adding a little bit of this bechamel sauce into all of the three fillings. So I just take a little scoop of that and put it in there. And we're going to put a little grating of nutmeg in that as well. So the nutmeg goes wonderfully in this dish. Just a dash. Okay. okay. And we'll stir that. You want to give yeah. that a stir. I'm going to do the same thing here with the kabocha and with the duck cells. Just a little bit because the duck cells are already pretty moist. We're going to get that all mashed together. So I've got the sweetness of the kabocha. I've got the savory complexity of the mushrooms. And then and the crepe mastery. Uh, and the crepe mastery of Mr. McGovern. Thank yes. You. All right. Okay, Finish, so now. Is, I'm, I am getting better at uh, anything with repetition. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and now yeah. we're ready to assemble the crepes. And what we're going to do is take one of your crepes. I don't know what, what you want to do is find one that's perfect for the top. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat off here. And we're going to layer all of these vegetables like this, okay? So you're going to take some kabocha squash and you're going to spread it on there. Very cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Ooh. And then take another crepe, put that on top. Then we'll put a little bit of spinach on there. Some lovely spinach filling. And we put another crepe on top. And guess what's next? Oh, uh, the duxelles. The duxelles, that's the right. The little yeah. mushy Do you think our French will get better if we make <laughs> gâteau de crepe? If, if we cook enough yeah. French dishes, eventually, <laughs> All right. yeah. All right. That is going to be delicious. And get another layer. And we're just going to continue doing that, alternating. You like think a you lasagna. can handle that? Like a lasagna. Do you think you can handle that? Because i got to get started on the dessert crepes. Okay, I'll do this. How high do I go with this thing? You're going to go about three layers each. Okay? Yeah, now, you want to mash that a little bit yeah, better. Yeah, a little okay. lumpy, that one. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Okay. Okay, Terry, if you can continue doing that with the crepes, I'm going to get started on the dessert gâteau de crepe. Like a lasagna. Well, not the dessert. Crepes. But I mean the, the, the gâteau. Yeah, 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 I guess in a way. Now this is absolutely fabulous. It's so sweet and creamy and delicious. And what I'm going to do is make a vegan whipping cream simply out of coconut milk. Now these cans of coconut milk have been in my refrigerator for about 24 hours because I want to be able to separate the cream from the coconut water. And you're going to see that in a second. All right, at the top of this can is this hardened solid coconut cream. And we're going to just whip that. That whips up beautifully, just like whipping cream does. I put it in my electric mixer here. And at the bottom of this can is the coconut water that's separated. So you don't want the coconut water in there because that won't whip up as well. I'm going to put two cans in there. Okay, now you can see it's getting nice and fluffy just like whipping cream. And I'm going to flavor it with some vanilla. And I'm going to sweeten it with some maple syrup. You can use powdered sugar, agave. This is maple syrup, which will give it a nice maple flavor. And the maple and the vanilla will mask the co overwhelming coconut flavor. And it'll be just like a tropical whipping cream. Mm, I gotta taste this cream. Miyoko. Mm. Good? So good. The ghetto's uh, fini. Ooh, beautiful. You did Merci. a fabulous job. Merci. And I'm glad you're finished because I got another job for you. Okay. I need you to slice a few strawberries for our dessert. Oh. Okay, why don't you put that right there. Get you a cutting board, okay, and just slice away. All right, in the meantime, what I'm gonna do 
is warm up a little bit of peach preserves. You can use apricot, you can use peach, just something light color. I think I need a pot. Pull that out of here. And I'm just gonna warm it up and we're gonna brush this onto each crepe um, as we alternate the layers with fruit and whipping cream. He's got the strawberries. Will you pass me the, uh, the other crepes, please? Yeah. All right, okay, so what we do now here is we take a crepe, put it on the plate here. All right, what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is take my pastry brush and I'm gonna dab a little bit of this jam on my crepe like that, okay? Now I've got my cream. Ugh. And this just makes for such good licking. I can't resist. All right. Wonderful coconut milk. Coconut whipped cream. And I'm gonna put that on my crepe like that. Just like whipping cream. Gotta find a place to put that. And I'm gonna take a few of these strawberries, Mr. McGovern, mm -hmm. and layer them here. You wanna do it in about in one layer. You don't want it piled up like that because you want the, the crepes to drape evenly in, like Terry did right there so beautifully. All right, and then I've got a bowl of berries here. I've got blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, and some mango I've cut up. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that on there too. I think I'll alternate the layer though. So I'll put a little bit more cream on top so that the next crepe layer will stick to it. And I put that another layer there. And then I'm gonna put a little more jam on there. actually use the ones with the holes in the middle. Just reserve the, the beautiful ones for the top. Terry, can you do me a favor? Yes. Can you get some aluminum foil, cover that gateau, and put it in the oven? I wonder what time it is. I know the Goldman sisters are going to be here soon. I think it's, uh, what is it, 6.45? Oh, boy, they'll be here in about 15 minutes. Got to get this in the oven. Now, that's got to bake for about 20 minutes or so until it's nice and hot. Um, all the components are cooked, so we just want to warm it up. Did then I we're going to... Okay? That's great. Just put it in the oven, and then we're going to enrobe it in that fabulous bechamel sauce, and Ooh. then voila, it will be done. So we're having two gateaus, two cakes. That's right. Crepe mm -hmm. cakes. We're having two crepe cakes. One for the main course and one for uh, dessert. For dessert, that's right. Okay, now this is done. Now what I'm gonna do is melt a little bit of chocolate and drizzle some on top, and then it'll be ready. You are a very bad person. <laughs> you want a taste? Here, oh, let's do, do this. I ever. Oh, come here, let's Mom. do this, let's do this. Let's go like this. Okay. Take, take a piece of crepe. Thank you. Put some cream on. And we'll put some veg some fruit in there. We'll roll it up. Oh, I see what you do. Yeah. I get what you're doing. Mmm. -hmm. Wait, I want to do that too. I want to go, mmm. That's so good. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course, it's not as elegant as serving it this way. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Mm. Oh. Okay, now I'm ready to drizzle the chocolate sauce on top of my. Dessert gâteau de crêpe. My daughter would be proud if I just say that right. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? Ah, oh, look at that. Oh, mmm. All right, that's ready. Put a little bit on the plate as well, too. There we go. That looks gorgeous. Now I'm gonna pull the gâteau de crêpe that we're gonna have for our entree out of the oven. Let's see if that's ready. Mmm, smells so good. Let's see if it's ready. Looks delicious too. All right, let's see if I can 
orchestrate moving this to this platter here. And I'm gonna pour the bechamel sauce on top and wow those gold dust twins. It's hot. Oh. It's a very delicate operation. There, made it. Pour the bechamel sauce on top, which will drizzle down the side like frosting on a cake. All right, I'm just gonna decorate it with a couple of herbs here. I've got some oregano and some thyme. You can put anything on top just for decoration. And now I'm ready to see how they react. Here you go, ladies. McGovern, what are you doing here? I, I suppose you invited yourself to dinner. I'll have you know I have a standing invitation here. <laughs> Sit down. Maybe he's one of those vegetable conspirators. That's for you. Mm -mm. It's good geschmack. What does she say? She says it tastes like chicken. Mm -mm. What was that? Oh, she said the portions are too small. But don't worry about it, darling. We'll take the rest of this home. This is real food, baby. Ah! This is so easy to make. It's another one of those, uh, 30 second specials. 